your presence and with your glory, with your word, with your love, with your tender mercies. Lord, with your plan and purpose in every one of our lives, your call, your hand is upon us. And Lord, as we turn to your word and we remind ourselves of your wonderful plan of salvation and deliverance, we say, Lord, we are not ashamed of this gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And Lord God, I thank you that every heart, that we will receive your word today, that we will be set free and stepping out today in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to start by reading from John 6. Sorry, John 8. John 8. It's a scripture that we've heard many times. But it never... Jesus said it, so it's worth saying it again. Amen. Amen. John chapter 8. And verse 31 to 38. I'm in the wrong place completely. Bear with me. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, We be Abraham's seed. And were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. And if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. And, you know, there's something mighty about this. First of all, he's talking to those who believe in him. And he said, if you continue in my word. Then you are my disciples indeed. And then he said that you will know the truth. So this is a mighty step. First of all, we continue in his word. We stay open to his word and then we will know him. And another place he said, this is the reason I came. This is the reason that I have finished the work that I was given to do, that you may know the, the, the God of all creation. You may know the only true living God and his son, Jesus Christ, and that you might have everlasting life. That is the purpose that Jesus came, that we might know him. And he said here, you will know the truth. That's him. That's his word. That's what he is. And it will make you free. And then he says on up down in verse um, 36, he says this word again, if, and he uses the word if and indeed, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. And that's what I want to ask you today. What does it mean to you to be free indeed? And I want to turn over and look at Exodus 14. God had a plan. We, we know the story. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm just going to have a look at it to save time. But we know the story that the children of Israel were in bondage in Egypt for 400 years. And we know that the Egyptians said, uh, way at the start, they said, we must bring oppression on this people because they are going to grow and get too strong and they're going to take over. But we will bring oppression and we will bring them into slavery and we will keep them down. And, and in other words, the plan of the enemy, the plan of the Egyptian was to rule over um, Israel, to make them their slaves so that they could say what they did and where they went. But God's plan, he said, I have heard the cry of my people and enough is enough. 
And he said to Moses, I want you to go and and we know the story of the burning bush and God gave Moses. He said, we know that Moses was born for this purpose. And he said, you're going to go into Egypt. and You're going to say to Pharaoh, let my people go. But they're not going to let he's not going to let them go. What 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 a, what? If you if God came and said to you, I'm sending you to do this, but it's not he's not going to do it. Would you be encouraged? Not very encouraged. But God said to Moses, this is what you were born for. And you will go in there and he will not let you go, not by, an, uh, uh, not by his own power, not by what we were singing this morning, but by my hand, I will bring my people out. Amen. So his, what he was saying is Pharaoh's never going to want to let them go. He's never going to let them go. But I am going to bring them out anyway. Amen. And that was God's plan. And we know that God brought them out, but he didn't only want, he didn't just want to bring them out. He wanted to bring them into the promised land. He had something better. He could have sent Moses in back into Egypt and said, I'm going to destroy the Egyptians right here. I'm going to set my people free right here. But no, he did not want the people set free where they were at. He wanted to take them out of that place into a different place. He wanted to change their position. He wanted to change their outlook. He wanted to set them free indeed. Not just free, but free indeed. Amen. So as we turn to Exodus chapter 14, <coughs> and it's well worth reading over the whole story to get this picture, but as I say, I want to keep the time down, so I'm not going to read through it. But we can see that in this chapter, God, said, God actually said that I bring my people, and he, he led Moses to bring them to camp beside the Red Sea. And what he did, he set the people up in an impossible situation. There was no way forward and there was no way back because the enemy was coming from behind. All the, the chariots, and the best chariots, the, the army, remember these are slaves. They've been in slavery for 400 years. They did not know anything other than how to survive. That's all they knew is how to survive from one day to the next. But the Egyptians were trained. They were an army and they had everything on their side. But God was saying, I have hardened the heart of Pharaoh and he is coming after you to take back what he thinks belongs to him. But I am saying you are going to be delivered today. Amen. Now if you if you read this, this I've, I've, I've got a little Bible book here. And this is the kind of picture that we've been growing up with. Bible story, children pictures, and it's like we have this, um, do you see the bright sky, the sea, the, this little tiny path, a few people? There were three million people. And it was night time. Read the story. Take the time to go home and read the story. It was night time. And it says that God said to said to Moses the, the the Egyptians are coming after you to take you back and we see here when the people saw that the sea was before them and they saw the army coming behind them that they were greatly they were sore afraid they were greatly afraid and the, Moses stood up and said to the people don't be afraid but stand still and see the deliverance of your God. For these Egyptians that you see today, you will see no more. Hold your peace. And sometimes we as the children of God has to say to this, the situation, hold your peace. Be still. And we hear from the word of, the, of God. And you know, Moses turned, it says that Moses prophesied this to the people. He, he was telling the people to stand still and to see the deliverance of God. And then it says that God turned around and said to him, why are you crying to me? What would you say if God came to you today and said, what are you crying to me for? Go stand lift your rod and stretch it out across that sea and part those waters. That's 
that's what God said to Moses. And I want to say to you today, what will you say when God comes and says that to you? Amen. I want you to see the urgency. If you read that story, as I said, it was in dark time. There, it was at night. The people were in fear. The Egyptians were coming fast and furious. Chariots and horses, and they were coming with a purpose. And they, were, uh, they had no other place to go but God. Amen. But God had a plan. And he had a purpose. And it says that it sent a strong east wind. And that wind blew all night. And it made a pathway through that sea. It parted the water. That the water stood like walls on the left and the, the right. And it says that the, dry, the ground was dry. What a miracle. But I want to put you in that place. That whenever this was no fairy tale miracle. This was no fairy tale like, you know, if you, you see these things on TV and, and whenever the, 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 it shows this deliverance of the people being, you know, gentle and floaty and lovely music and, oh, you know, God's mood. It was nothing like that. There was a mighty wind that was, flow, that was blowing. And if you can imagine the, the strongest wind that you have ever heard and you've been in your house and maybe you have felt that, that, that the wind or opened the door and the, wind, the door blew or whatever. Imagine that. But imagine it multiplied so much more that it actually caused a sea to part. It must have, the noise must have been, uh, uh, I don't know, unbelievable. The force of that wind must have been something out of this world. And it was. And that's what the power of the Holy Spirit is in the church today. He said, the wind of my spirit, the wind of my spirit, it, is, it cannot be comprehended and it cannot be stopped. Amen. So this was a time, this was a, a, a situation that was strong and it was mighty. But God had a plan. And remember, God does everything everything on purpose and has great purpose for everything he does we can comfort ourselves in that god on purpose led the the israelites to the red sea no way forward no way back but god amen the urgency was there god said i'm going to bring 400 years of slavery and i'm going to bring it to an abrupt end this night, it's coming over. It shall be over. And you may say to yourself, you may be so discouraged that you think that God cannot suddenly, he cannot do overnight, he cannot change this thing overnight. But I want to tell you, God can bring a very abrupt end whenever we take him at his word. And that's his plan to set us free indeed. And this reminds me of Calvary. Our salvation was complete in that one. When Jesus cried, it is finished. Amen. Amen. The work of salvation was complete. And I want just to bring to your attention today that Moses was not a slave. Moses was never a slave. He was born, and you know the story, that they, were, they knew there was a deliverer, so they were killing the children, but Moses' mother put him in that basket. We know how God ordained every step of the way. But Moses was brought up knowing his people knowing about the Israelites he was brought up by his mother but he was also brought up in the palace so he was never a slave and that is important because we must realize that when we are redeemed we are redeemed when we are born again we are it says he translated us out of the kingdom of darkness 
and he has brought us into his kingdom. And from the moment you were born again, whether you have realized it or not, you are free. You are free to move forward. You are free and access, free access to everything that God has planned. But we see that only two of the slaves got totally set free. The people, and this is what, the, what God has said to me today, or he's been sent to, sent to me about today. My people are missing their miracles because they are missing my purpose. They are short-sighted, like slaves. The enemy seeks to wear you out, wear you down, until you're just like a slave. You've lost your fight. You've lost your freedom. You simply lie down, and you're waiting for God to do something. Do you know what it says in Isaiah chapter 60? We just, I'll just turn there because I want to read that in a minute. It says, Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. <coughs> and I hear these words that God is saying that this day, in these days we are going to see a mighty turnaround. There's a mighty wind that's blowing. And it's going to bring what has oppressed the church. It's going to bring it to a very abrupt end. And God is saying to his people, you will either arise and shine in this day or you will stay in the wilderness. That is the challenge that is set before us today. Did you ever feel like taking somebody by their shoulders and just shaking them and telling them to wise up? And to just shaking them and wanting to, to shake some sense into them. Do you know what that feels like? Did you ever get that done to you? Well, I, the Holy Spirit did that to me. Because I was in a situation I thought, God, I cannot take this anymore. And I was crying and I was, God, you need to do something. And it was like the Holy Spirit just took me and just up into my face said, what? more do you want me to do? Was Calvary not enough? Oh, I was shaken. And I tell you, I was changed. And I can tell you, looking back, nobody was telling me that to do this. Nobody but the Holy Spirit was guiding me. I didn't know what way to turn, but I just repented. I said, Lord, I repent of this mindset your word in me and he said you speak what I tell you to speak and you speak only what I tell you to speak you pray what I say and you will see the victory and I tell you things started to change and ever since bit by bit I've been challenging every thought everything that comes into my mind everything I thought I believed I'm saying Lord is it in here is it in here we went to pr pray for somebody recently and they were, they were being tormented by a demon. That's just a simple way. That's the only way you can put it. But they had went to their own minister. And you know what they said? The minister said, sleep with your Bible under your pillow. What good is it going to do under your pillow? God says, get this word in your heart and in your mind and in your mouth. It does nobody any good until it is spoken. And spoken, and I want. Sometimes I feel like taking this Bible and hitting the person over the, their head and saying, "Show me in here yeah. what you're saying," because I'm so fed up. And I want to say to you, you tired? Are you sick and tired of listening to the rubbish, and listening to and just taking everything that the world throws at us? Do you know there was someone who had a dream, and the dream said. Uh, in the dream, there was these demons, and they were in a, a fighting ring. And they, on the front of them, they had their names, and they were oppression and different things like this. And, um, but behind them, it said, just life. It's just life. I heard that. I thought, you know, that's true. We take a lot of things 
and we just say that's just life. Well, I tell you, God's word says you are in this world, but you are not of this world. And he said, all things are possible to them that believe. And whenever he said to Moses, you take your staff, you hold it out over, the, stretch it out over the sea and you part those waters. Jesus also said that if you have faith like a mustard seed, you would say to that mountain, be you removed and cast into the sea. And this is what God is rising up in these days. A people who will take God at his word and not only hold on to it. I saw a picture and people go, I'm holding on to God's word. I'm I'm believing for a miracle. I believe God is going to heal me someday. I tell you, take that Bible, stop holding it and release the word of God. You need to open it. You need to take the promise and you need to release it. Amen. You need to receive it and release it. And God is saying to his people that the purpose for your miracle is not so that you will be more comfortable or to get you out of, out of difficulty, but your miracle of deliverance is for you, your generations to come, and for hundreds and not thousands of other people around you. This land God is saying, I am given to my people. And there is coming a wind, and I prophesy this, that there, because God, I've been hearing this in my spirit now for weeks, that the tide is turning. The tide is turning in our nation. And his word is hold on tight. Because I am giving restoration to my church. I am giving back the ground that has been lost. And he's looking for those who will take, take up his word. So every one of us has a part to play in God's great plan. You were born for this time. You're in this generation on purpose. And he wants to set you free, free indeed, free from your past, free from everything that has held you bondage, free from every wrong doctrine, every wrong teaching, every hurt, every disappointment, everything that you have been th through in the past, God is saying, it's over, it's done, it's under my blood, and now I want you to move forward. A new creation. Remember that, that scripture that says you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, <laughs> all things have become new. He wants you to look and see. And that was another thing that God has been saying to me. What do you see? Because what you see, he said, what you see is what you believe. And what you believe is what you'll speak. So if you're seeing God's plan and you're seeing God's purpose, you're going to believe him and you're going to speak it and you're going to walk in it. So he wants us to be free so that we can set others free. Is there anyone in this house today that said, is saying enough is enough? We already heard the, the word from the Lord in Jeremiah, was it? God has decreed over his people that you are free indeed. Amen. You are free to dance. You are free to sing. You are free to speak my word. You are free to rise up against the enemy and say this far, no further. You are free to advance you are free to be filled with that fire of God. It's not for one or two. It's not for the special people. It is for everyone. In that day of Pentecost, it said that, that those people were turned around in an instant. They became different in an instant because when the fire fell, it says it fell on every one in the house and every one of them spoke with new tongues. And it says that they, knew, they, they didn't, were in hiding no more. But the whole city knew they were there. And God has got cities for us to take today. And you're sitting thinking that the enemy has you cried it in and you can't, and, and, and Lord, I need a miracle here. I need a miracle here. And God said, I'll take care of that. Look out there and see what I've called you to. So there's more. So I'm going to say to you today, will you cross over your Red Sea today by faith? And you're maybe saying, how did I do it? How did I do it? How did you get saved? You believed in your heart. 
and you confess with your might. Believe in your heart and confess with your might. Somewhere you decided that Jesus Christ is Lord and you were going to surrender your life to him and you began to believe it in your heart and you began to confess it with your might and you do that with everything, everything, whether it's healing, provision, whatever, that's what it is. And I prophesy to you today, I'm going to ask you please stand to your feet, lift your hands up to the Lord and just pray for a moment. Just pray for a moment because God is in this place today. His spirit is right here. He knows exactly what you've been through. He has seen it all. He knows all of it and it is recorded in heaven. And what today, everything that has been stolen, taken, withheld is recorded and it shall be restored. Amen. And this is the word of God. If you will allow God's word to rise up in you, you will take hold of his word and believe it with your heart and confess it with your mouth. You will no longer go from struggle to struggle. You will no longer go from battle to battle. But this cycle will be broken in the name of Jesus. And you will begin to grow. You will begin to glow from glory to glory, from victory to victory. And where you once cried, you will laugh. You will look back in six months' time and say, I am a different person. Do you receive that today? Amen. For victory is yours. Amen. And I want to pray for you now. Just, just for a few moments, just please just pray in the spirit. Just pray. Just open up your heart to the Lord and say, oh, Lord, I'm ready. I want to cross over. I want to step out of any bondage, anything. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, I take you at your word today that you said, Lord, that the chains are broken. You said you conquered. You, you, oh God, went into hell and you took those keys of death and hell and the grave. And you gave those keys to your people, to your church. And Lord, I decree right now that we are your people. We have been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. And you said we overcome with that blood and with the word of our testimony. So I speak that blood of God into every situation, every home represented here today. And I call a halt to every Pharaoh spirit, every Egyptian spirit that is trying to bring oppression or slavery in any shape or form and I say you're cut off today this is no to this far and no further in Jesus mighty name and today I lose the revelation Lord as you change my heart as you change my understanding as you came that day and you took that thing out of me and Lord you put something that will not be quenched you put that revelation that it is done it is done I lose that revelation right now to flow and to rise up in every heart that they will no longer look at the problem and see the impossibility but they will look at that problem and see yes. that with my God all things are possible that they will have a shout of praise in them that will not be silent in the name of Jesus amen 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 I just want to just if you receive it, we're going to sing that chorus. I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I am a child of God. Amen. And let that revelation from this day Glory. forward declare, yes. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am healed. I am free indeed. Amen. And let that revelation rise up in you that you are not a slave. 
You are not even a child anymore, but you are the son of God. You are a son of God. Amen. Amen. You are that minister of fire that he has called you to be. He has anointed you. And if you will take hold of that today, and if you will go forward today, because I'm telling you, there's the darkness. I was going to read that. Sorry. We need to hear this. Behold, Isaiah 60. How did that turn? Isaiah 60. Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. It's already there. Like your healing, it's already there. Like everything that devil stole from you, it's already yours. You've got to take it by faith. Amen. But remember that God said to Moses, you stretch forth your hand and you part the Red Sea. But then it says that when Moses stood up and stretched forth that rod, that God caused a great wind to come. All he had to do was stretch it out. Jesus said, I speak the word, but my father doeth the work. And all you've got to do is speak it. All you've got to do it is be that, it's, it's like um, a vessel. All you are is a vessel. That your, your feet are, might be on this earth, but you are touching heaven. And when God says, if you agree with me and you will speak my word, my spirit will move through you. And you're asking God, change this situation. He said, I'll change you, and you will change this situation. Amen. Amen. It says here, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Do you believe it's here? Do you believe the people are in gross darkness? But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. That's who you are in this world. And there's going to be a move of God's spirit like never before. Amen. We are about to see that it's going to be in a short time. There's going to be nothing but it looks nothing like but chaos. But I'm telling you, the people of God are going to shine. The people of God are going to arise out of that chaos. And people are going to see in Great Britain, in Scotland, in Northern Ireland, and in Ireland, all over this place. And all over the world it's happening. But it's going to happen here in a very short time where God is saying, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Amen. So let's sing this. I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I am a child of God. And I want to say to you today, Wherever you're sitting, cross over to the other side. Tell your body, tell your flesh, I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm no longer stuck. I'm no longer in a trap. I'm no longer in bondage. But every chain is broken in the name of Jesus. And I'm moving from this place and I'm crossing over. Amen. So cross over to the other side as we sing this. And don't bump into anybody. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. Will you cross over? Maybe you say, I always sit on this side. I'm just going to stay here. It doesn't really matter. There was one prophet who said to the king, take the arrows put and throw those arrows in there and smash them. And he said, you should have done this. You should have destroyed them, not just passively done it. And I say to you today, if you will move your feet, it's a point of contact that says, God, I believe you. And I'm going to do what you said you tell me to do. I'm going to be listening for your voice, and I'm going to be ready to move when you say move. I'm going to be ready to speak what you say to speak. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. So get moving. I want to see you because when, when I start singing, I'm not seeing you.
Welcome to the other side. Amen. The Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. Amen. Hallelujah. This marks, mark this day on your calendar. Because the body of Christ, the true church. Amen. Do you know what that means to me now? I hear all these, my church this and my church that, and we believe this and we believe that. But you know when I look at the word and I see the word church, now when I say that word church, I see the government, Amen. the government of Christ. And it says on his, that government there shall be no end. Amen. Jesus said, I will build my church yeah. and the gates of hell Amen. shall not prevail against it. We are in that church. Hallelujah. We are in the church. Yeah. The government of God. The authority of God in the earth. That's what the church is. And then this day we are going to see a turnaround. Yes. Jesus. Doors are opening. Yeah. So be ready. Whatever your ministry is, get ready. Yeah. Get Seek the Lord like never before. Yeah. And prepare in your own ministry. Because God is going to call upon it and he is going to make a way for it Amen. in these days. It's going to be needed and it's going to be a Holy Ghost inspired. Amen. Seek that fire like never before in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we thank you and praise you. We give you glory and we give you praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just people say amen. 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 Hallelujah.